Hi everyone and welcome. Jenny Marples here from pushingtherightbuttons.blogspot.com. So I'm back today with a brand new tutorial for you. I'm sharing it for the Frilly and Funky Challenge blog sponsored by the Funky Junkie Boutique and it's part of their Saturday Showcase series. So this tutorial today um, concentrates on faux effects for metal. I was inspired by this recent panel that I created. Uh, you'll see here that I used some rusty keys. Now these are genuinely rusty and I put a vignette accent at the top of this panel and because it was just hammered metal it kind of really contrasted a bit too much. I wanted to give it that rust effect so I came up with a way of using distress paints, alcohol inks and archival inks to do that and thought it would be a good idea to share that with you today. So let's get started. So I've started first of all by cutting a piece of metallic craft stock. This is from Tim Holtz and I've embossed it using the 3D, this 3D embossing folder. Okay and I'll put all the details of where these can be purchased and all the um, names and everything at the bottom of the page on here. So let's get started with this. As I said, it's all about distress paint, um, alcohol inks and archival inks. And I'm going to start with, this is Rusty Hinge Distress Paint. And all I'm going to do first of all is dab some of the paint all over the surface of this embossed metallic cardstock. Now my paints are all coming towards the end of their lives in the sense that I've had them for quite a long time and so some of them are getting are running out and some are drying up ever so slightly but no problem. So I've done a coat of that. Now what I'm going to do is give it a very light misting of water. There you are, just a light misting. Now don't go heavy handed, this is the one thing I learned very quickly. Don't go heavy handed with the water because you're going onto a slick surface. So already that paint is going to start to move. Next I'm going in with, this is ground espresso distress paint. And all I want to do now is just dab lightly over the surface. I'm just adding those dark touches and it's good to get random spots in here. Just patting it gently all over the surface. And this works on this cardstock, but it also works on, as you saw, um, the faux metal surfaces and um, on, on real metal surfaces as well. Giving it another slight mist there just to start moving things around. The last thing that I'm going to do now is just to use, this is um, rust alcohol ink and I'm going to add some, some drops on here. Now I did try before just splattering those, just dropping them from a height, but actually it kind of looked a bit blotchy. So I would suggest going in reasonably close and that way you get the chance to decide whereabouts you want that rust to be because of all the things that's going on this surface this is the one that's going to um, stick pretty quickly. The paint I'm going to need to dry and you'll notice actually by adding the water into that surface as well um, that it allows the alcohol ink to to move quite a bit so you can see now we've got a mix there of the rusty hinge the ground espresso and the rust alcohol ink now I'm going to dry that off now obviously you can go in with this more heavily if you want to um, but do bear in mind that you still want some of that metal showing through so just using my heat tool and if you lift your card away from the surface um, you're going to find that it will dry a lot quicker than if you leave it flat um, on your mat. So we'll just dry that through. It doesn't take very long to do. Okay. Okay. 
There we are, about there. And already you're getting that nice rusted effect to it. You see the cardstock is moving a little, but don't worry about that, that's fine. Okay, so with that part done, what I'm going to do is add a little more colour in. And uh, this time I'm going to use, this is Spiced Marmalade, so a much brighter colour. Now with mine, I do know that the, the paint is starting to get a little gloopy. As I said, I've had, as you'll see, a lot of these paints for quite some time. Um, so uh, they are going to show the effects of wear and tear. And I'm just now splattering gently over the top again. The same that I did with the rusty hinge, but this is just a brighter colour. And it's got that, it gives the whole thing that bloom that you get. If you look at um, the back of the rusty keys, uh, there's a kind of a, a, an orange rust bloom that happens on the surface. And that kind of adds that bit in. So here we go. And you'll see it's all kind of now melding together. So we've got that nice bright surface on there. Okay. Now then, just clear away some of the, the paint a little. Okay. And again, I want to go back in and dry this. Now this obviously is now neat paint as it were. So will dry an awful lot quicker. You just need to feel so that it's gone touch dry, which that now has. Okay, so, excuse the brief pause, I completely forgot. Um, so this is a, a sanding block. Um, I know that Tim has a sanding grip, which is um, easily available as well. I've just got one of these cheap soft sanding blocks and you want to be uh, make sure that you've got something that's quite a gentle surface you don't want to be too abrasive with this okay so now what I'm going to do is just rub lightly over the surface now you'll have noticed that I've got um, an old battered craft mat over the top of my media mat and I'm sure some of you are wondering why well this is the reason because I knew I was going to be using the sanding block and Frankly, I don't care what happens to the, the old craft mat because that's uh, allowed to be abused, but I'm not using a sanding block all over my lovely media mat. So you'll see, by changing directions, bear in mind there's some 3D embossing on this, so you're kind of wanting to bring that all back to life. So with that now done, if you polish that off, You'll see I'm removing any of the dust that came from sanding. And you can carry on sanding back that surface as much as you like. But there we go. There's a really beautiful rust, real rust look finish to that. Now there's one more trick that I do suggest because it's, it's beautiful. And it's lovely and shiny, but if you want to get more of an aged look, the other thing that you can do, there you are, is just show you. This is watering can archival ink. And all I'm now going to do is just rub lightly over the surface and it'll hit some of those raised areas. Not all of them. It's not going to obliterate the, the silver foil, um, but it just hits some of those top areas and just adds back in a little of that drama. And every layer that you add to this is just adding that little bit extra to it. So there you go. Here is that finished faux rusted metal effect. And I think you'll agree that's, that's rather realistic. Okay, so let's not stop there. Want to do one more version because as you'll well know, there is also a gold metallic craft cardstock 
and I thought it would be nice to have a play with this one and create a verdigris look. Very, very similar method. So let's just get rid of any orange from here. There we go. So embossed with the same embossing folder, absolutely identical. This time we're going to go in with, this is Evergreen Bow Distress Paint. And again, this one, this one is, is again old and also, yep, running out. Time to order some more, Jenny. So let's just scrape a little on you. I had a feeling this might happen. So let's just scrape them some there. You'll see, notice that I've been using the dabber tops throughout. Now, obviously, when you order Tim's paints, distress paints these days, they'll come with the flip top cap, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but you, if you want to use the dabber tops, they are available separately as well. So, which is quite nice if you want to play with paint, but don't actually want to get it all over your fingers. So again, this is Evergreen Bow, and we're just going to pat in exactly the same way that we did with the rusty hinge, just pat gently over the top. And this time we're going for a beautiful verdigris finish. So just covering that. Remember, we don't need to go too heavy because there are more layers to come. So that's just that colour on. So we've got that one. And then, as you'll remember, a light mist with the water. And I'm going to go back in again. Here's that ground espresso. And... Again, just dabbing gently over this again is just to add those darker touches darker elements and just patting that lightly over the top in themselves the dots will always look a bit odd and random but once you start to layer these up as you've seen with the rust, that then is when the magic really happens, when they start to combine. If for any reason you're worried about uh, the paint mixing on your paint dabber, don't worry, just a quick wipe and you'll see all damage gone. Not that there was damage, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we've got those two and they're now misting lightly together quick spritz with a bit more water now this time i'm going in with this is mushroom alcohol ink and i'm going to do some drops again the same kind of thing um, as before more directing this rather than just throwing it randomly and this is adding to that deeper brown hue throughout so just a few drops there. This is slightly more subtle than the rust colour. So that's that part done. Let's dry that off. It doesn't look like it but at this stage the paint is still wet, that surface is still wet. And the lovely thing about the distress paint is the fact that when you add that water you're going to get that wonderful distress effect where the paints and inks will blend together because they are, until they're dry, still reactive with water. So let's, yep, you'll see the paint, the paper does curl a little, but as you saw before, once it's all finished with, it will then flatten out. So make sure that this is all nice and dry. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way of my heat gun. just make sure that's that's all done yep that's all sorted so then the final pop of color on this one is cracked cracked pistachio and again just going in over the top and just dabbing that paint randomly if, if you haven't got the dabber tops um, the other thing that you can do is obviously just to use, if you use a flat-ended brush, so the kind you'd use for stenciling would be ideal. So just use, uh, put a little of the paint onto your, um, onto your mat and then um, just stipple that over the surface in exactly the same way as you would do if you were going to be stenciling. Now I've gone in quite heavy-handed with this one. You'll see, but I think you can really see this verdigris look coming to uh, coming to fruition here. Again, going back in with the heat tool. 
So this is just that second layer of paint and again it's undiluted so this time it's going to dry an awful lot quicker. Again, let's make sure that's touch dry. Little area down there and some up at the top. That's it, so we've got that completely dry. Let's get rid of the paint on the side here. There. Now, doing exactly the same thing, make sure it's dry because you're going in with your sanding block again. Again, what this does is just removes some of the paint and ink that you've applied to the top of the surface. It's just hitting those raised areas. So I'm just changing the direction. Now, there's something a bit different when you come to sand back the gold craft stock as opposed to the silver one. Because what you're going to reveal is a silver layer underneath. It's not going to go back to the gold. So I'll just go in with that. I tend to forget just quite how deeply embossed this all is. It can be quite brutal, but there we go. Right, let's dust that off so you can kind of see the whole effect. Okay, so get rid of the tissue. Now, you'll see here that there is a silver as well as a gold look to this. Okay, you may be happy with that. That might be the look that you want. If, however, you do still want it gold, my suggestion is to take your Orange Blossom archival ink. And with this, you're going to do exactly the same as before. And you're going to rub over the surface. I'm being slightly more heavy handed this time because what that's doing, as you'll see, is reviving that gold colour. So it's removing any of the silver that's been revealed by sanding and bringing back the vibrancy of that gold. Now let me just dry this off because when the ink is wet, it will look a lot more vibrant to when it's drier. You'll see that colour has been revived beautifully. And there you have it. So there's the finished verdigris effect. I think you'll agree that that's uh, quite a realistic look. So here we are. Just to recap, there's the, the rusted silver and the verdigris gold. Okay, so hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. There'll be links to the Saturday Showcase blog, um, uh, blog post, get my teeth in, uh, the blog post below as well as the Funky Junkie Boutique where you'll be able to find all of the products that I've used today all in the shop. And if you have any questions, please uh, just leave a comment below. If you enjoyed seeing today's video, please make sure you give me a like and a thumbs up. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.